fantastic. Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome back to Coding Game, where today we are doing The Descent. If you haven't seen my previous video where I explain what this game is and all these different things on the screen, go check that out. But welcome to episode 2 and we're going to crack right on with solving this particular puzzle. So the goal is to destroy the mountains before your starship collides with one of them. For that, shooting the highest mountain on your path. I'm guessing we're gliding down, our engines have failed or something. Um, the rules. At the start of each game turn, you are given the height of eight mountains from left to right. By the end of the game turn, you must fire at the highest mountain by outputting its index 0 to 7. So this is an interesting thing. In computing, we very often count from 0. And if you get confused by that, you can quite easily see it on your fingers. If you hold out the first finger and go 0, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 fingers, you'll actually see that you've got eight fingers out there now because you started from zero. So we count st count from zero very often. Firing on the mountain will only destroy part of it, reducing its height. Your spaceship descends after each pass. The victory conditions, we win if we destroy every mountain, and we lose if we crash into a mountain or provide an incorrect or no output. So that's what we've got to do. Over here on the right hand side we have our main loop. At the moment what happens is, it's, it's given us some of the code here. So within the loop we've got, uh, um, within our infinite loop, we've got a, a, another loop. And this loop is for 0 to 7. So this loop goes through 8 times. Um, and in each of those 8 times it reads the console line and it gets the height of the mountain and puts it in a variable called mountain h. Then it outputs that um, to the console, which is what we need to do, and it outputs the index of the mountain we need to fire on. Now, it's actually got a hard coding value in there, 4. Let's, let's play this test case now and see what happens if we don't change the code. See what happens is the spaceship flies across, shoots mountain labelled 4, shoots it again, and crashes into mountain 0. We can do something similar where if we crashed into mountain zero, let's set it to zero. Let's put a piece of text string in there and play it again. So we can see that our spaceship comes along, fires at mountain zero this time, comes back through and it's going to fire at mountain zero, but then it crashes into mountain one. So we can actually tell it exactly which one we want to fire at. We just need to work out which is the highest and then pass it that particular number. So what we're going to do is we're going to change some of the way this is working. We're going to take this declaration of mountain height out of our for loop and we're going to put it in front because what we're going to do is we're going to declare three more variables, okay? So we're going to have mountain height um, that we have there and then we're going to have highest mountain, okay? And we're going to have, uh, or actually, maybe we should just have hate. Mm, so we've got mountain. Let's let's put some full words in here so we know what we're doing. Very often in, com in com coding and computing, we shorten things down because we have to type them out lots and lots of times. But I want it to be clear exactly what these variables are for. So we've got mountain height, highest mountain, and we're going to have highest mountain index. This is the index of the mountain that we're doing. And it's also this I figure here. This index of I through the loop is when we're going through and indexing through. So we've got these variables. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to actually um, set some values in these variables just for cleanliness, shall we say. The highest mountain, uh, uh, that is the height of the highest mountain, it, we're going to set it to zero to begin with. We're just going to set all these to zero, just to make sure that we've got some uh, basic values in them to begin with, rather than just being empty. That's just some basic cleaning. We probably don't necessarily need that. So we've got our three variables now. We can track the current mountain's height that we're looking at. We can track the highest mountain, and we can keep a record of the highest mountain index. Now, it's this highest mountain index that we're going to be passing to our console once we've figured out what it is. So we may as well put that in there now. Brilliant. We're nearly finished. Or are we? Let's get rid of this little bit of text here. We don't want that now. There we go. 
So what we need now is we need to get this uh, mountain H here. That's our mountain height. We rename that. So let's rename that there as well. So we get a mountain height come in. We want to be able to compare that and work out if it's bigger than our highest mountain. So let's go um, do a comparison. If if our mountain height oh, I accidentally pasted that in twice. If our mountain height is greater than our highest mountain so far then we'll do some stuff and then we'll end the if so what stuff are we going to do well we need to do a couple of things first thing we need to do is we need to record that current highest mountain so the highest mountain index gets recorded and we're going to do that by making highest mountain index equal to i that index of the loop that we're going through they remember these mountains are in what uh, zero to seven and our loop is zero to seven as well so we can use this i in the loop to record our mountain index okay so if the new mountain height is bigger than the highest mountain so far we record that index there's one other thing we need to do and that's we need to set the new highest mountain height if our new mountain is higher than our highest mountain then surely that should be our new highest height so our highest mountain then becomes equal to our mountain height if our mountain height is bigger than our highest mountain just so that we record that value and that is pretty much it let's have a look at that in action on this first level again let's see if i've got it all right there we go so mountain zero gets blown up and as the ship comes along it shoots mountain mountain one then mountain two and so far it's not crashed into anything this is brilliant we're going well mountain three four five and of course six and seven so it looks like we've successfully done this, but we need to check our logic to make sure that if mountains are all different heights, that it is going to work. Let's just roll back through the game state and see what happens. Whoop. So at the very beginning, we get given a list of mountains. You can see them down here in the bottom left hand corner. The highest mountain is mountain zero at nine. And then the next one well, is mountain zero at one. So let's check to see what these values would be as we go through our code. So we, we know that our, the highest mountain is 9. Let's see if our code can work it out. At the beginning of our loop, our mountain height gets set to 9 because that's the first mountain height. It says if 9 is greater than... Now we haven't got a highest mountain set. We set that up here to 0. So if 9 is greater than 0, then we set our highest mountain index to i, which is currently 0 because we're on the first, the 0th mountain. And then we set our highest mountain to the height of that mountain so our highest mountain becomes equal to nine as well let's look at that on the next pass on the next on the next loop of this it then says um, mountain height of the next line because we're looping through these here is eight and it says mountain height is equal to eight if eight is greater than our mountain height which is now set to nine which it isn't so it doesn't execute this code here our highest mountain doesn't get changed and our highest mountain index doesn't get changed because 8 is not greater than 9 and if we go through here on the third pass through of this piece of code it will say is uh, I will be equal to 2 because it's our third pass through it will say mountain height and it will make it equal to 7 because that's what mountain 2's height is and it will say if mountain height uh, 7 is greater than our highest mountain height which is 9 then and 7 isn't greater than 9 so it doesn't execute the code once again and this is what happens it just keeps going through ignoring all the smaller mountains until it gets to the end of the loops and writes out the highest mountain let's play test this in the next scenario in this next scenario we've got some scattered mountains and as you can see, not all of them are the same height. In fact, the highest one was zero, and again, the second highest is one, but the next highest ones are all scattered in this section here. You can see we're now shooting mountain four, which is actually really good. So we're going to check our code and see what our code was doing at that period of time. And uh, mountain three looks like, yeah, it was in the way. So I think the last one we got there is mountain six. And congratulations to us, our code has done it we're now clear for landing so let's just go back a little bit and see what was going on 
So the first bits was pretty much the same. Mountain zero, mountain one was the same. Mountain two also got taken out. Now here, as we come into mountain three, I think, is this this one here? Yeah. Uh, as we come in, come into the third iteration, it says uh, four. We outputted four. And that is because, if we look here at the height of the mountains, mountain zero is height zero, mountain one is zero, mountain two is zero. Mountain three is three, and mountain four is six. So let's look through the code. This I loop here would go through a few times, and it's going to be saying, okay, right, on the first loop, it's going to say mountain height is equal to zero. Is that greater than uh, our highest mountain height? Now, our highest mountain height is by default set to zero, so it's not. It's not going to record the index. Then it says our next mountain, mountain one. The height of mountain one is zero. Uh, is that greater than zero? No, it skips that code. Again, the same with two. Height is equal to zero, skips the code. It gets to mountain three, and it says our mountain height is three. And then it says, is our mountain height three greater than zero? Well, yes, it is. So it's going to set our index to three, because that's what mountain index we're looking at. And it sets the highest mountain height to three as well. Then it loops around and says, well, mountain four. Get the height of mountain four. The height of mountain four is six. It says, is the height of six greater than three, our current highest mountain? Well, actually, yes, it is. So this if statement gets executed again, and it sets that index to four, because it's our fourth loop through, and it sets our highest mountain um, up and records the height as six. So there it goes. Um, we have ha successfully done that test case. And if we go through to the next test cases, it, we should find that uh, our ship is automatically shooting the highest target every single time because it's looping through all eight mountains, checking to see if the last one was bigger than the next each time. Well, you see, it didn't completely destroy that mountain there. And as long as the mountain is higher than the last one, it will allow you to shoot it. Hey, that's all doing pretty good. So we did Strong Mountains 1, let's do Strong Mountains 2. There we go. So that one got reduced. What's the next highest one? That one's the next highest one. It's all working out pretty good. Looping through those eight different mountains and finding out that highest value and keeping a record of the highest value so far. Remember, each time the ship flies across the screen, it's doing all eight loops. It's checking all eight mountains. And that check happens each time. And there we go. We are clear for landing on the last one. And let's just do this one mountain one. Um, it's a bit of a weird test case, but it's just going to keep shooting mountain three for some reason. Uh, mountain 3 has a height of 7, then it's got a height of 6, a height of, what's this on the next loop, 5, so it's always going to be Mountain 3. Our code works for all the scenarios. Well, there we go. Uh, we have successfully cleared the descent. I hope I was able to explain it in a way that you was able to understand if you didn't already know this, and I hope if you did already know how this worked that you still enjoyed this anyway. Thank you very much for watching. Put your thoughts, ideas and questions as always down in the comments section below. I do look at them all. And if you want to know anything more about me, the other videos I do or any of the events I run, check out masterhellish.net. All the information is there along with my Facebook and Twitter and so forth. Thanks for watching. Take care and goodbye.